Thank you, Liz. Um, and as Una said, welcome. And um, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. I do have it up and I'll try to pay attention to it as well. Today, we're going to be um, talking a little bit about uh, open education as an enabler for anti-racism and social justice. Um, Asantawe and I are um, teachers at community colleges. Um, and um, I will introduce myself first. Our agenda today is to uh, do a little bit of a, a CCC OER overview. And we'll talk about anti-racism and social justice and some examples of what Asante Way and I have done in, the, in our classrooms. We have a couple breakout rooms and resources for you to look at. And um, then we'll come back and I have a Mentimeter for you to uh, just get some ideas, maybe just one little idea that you could uh, implement in your own classrooms or in your or own organizations. And we'll talk a little bit uh, about um, upcoming events and how to stay in the loop. And um, that will be our, our time together. CCC OER's mission is to expand awareness and access to high quality OER, to support faculty choice and development, to foster regional OER leadership and to improve student equity and success. And we're focusing a little bit on the last one today. As you can see, we have 111 members in 37 states, including Canada. And uh, Asanta Way is um, running from a classroom to our webinar. So let me introduce myself first. My name is, uh, there she is. Hi, Asante. Where would you like to introduce yourself first, or do you want to catch your breath? It's okay. I, I, I was kicking the students out of the classroom. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Asante Dawson. I am a Associate Professor of Mathematics at Housatana Community College, um, and where I also serve on our Educational Resources Committee um, as the chair, uh, where this is where we handle all of our OER stuff. Um, and I'm also a member of uh, the CCC OER EDI uh, committee. And I am Lori Beth Larson. I am at Central Lakes Community College in the middle of Brainerd, uh, in the middle of Minnesota, Brainerd, Minnesota. And I um, primarily teach English and reading and global studies. And I've been the OER lead faculty running our learning circles for a number of years. And let me advance to the next slide. So uh, today we wanted to um, think about the um, this bell hooks uh, quote that it takes fierce commitments to let our work as teachers reflect on progressive pedagogies. Into the next piece, Santa. We would like uh, to acknowledge the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Wappinger, Pagaset, Dakota, and, and Anisha Nabe, sorry, mm -hmm. First Nations on which we are learning, working, and organizing today. We pay respect to their elders, both past and present, who have been stewards of this land throughout many generations. And um, if you wanted to find uh, your the land that you are on, um, we in included the website where you can uh, locate that. Whose land you're on, I should say. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, as we said, we're we're talking about open ed as an enabler for anti-racism and social justice, and so. Lori Beth and I were talking about some of the changes uh, that we've made um, to our courses um, 
to, you know, to our materials, to the way we assess uh, grade um, our students. Um, and I first want to acknowledge all of my colleagues at Housatonic Community College uh, in our first year studies math program, because this is not my work <laughs> um, alone. This is a uh, work of many, many people who contributed. So I want to make sure I say that up front. I'm just summarizing the things that we, the collective we have done um, uh, to uh, be more uh, equitable in, in our work. Um, so I teach math. Um, and so Oftentimes math, uh, we assess, you know, by giving tests and quizzes and homework. And uh, that has been our typical way. Do you know how to do the math um, by sort of doing these problems? Um, we've made a lot of changes. Uh, it started off with the introduction to portfolios. Um, students, you know, when they take assessments, especially in math, you know, tend to be nervous and have a lot, lot of anxiety. Um, it's a common theme. And so our portfolio started off with, let's give them something uh, that they can grow from. Um, it started off with <laughs> test corrections um, that you had to sort of write about. So you had to uh, talk about what you got wrong and then, you know, how you would correct it. Sometimes with test corrections, we'd have them write a new problem and solve it. Um, so that was the first parts of the portfolio. As, as the portfolios developed, uh, then uh, certain writing assignments uh, were added. Uh, we did an assignment about um, tips to make you successful in this course. Um, and we had these six uh, things that you, would, you should do as students. And we had students write about uh, the thing that they had most challenging. And then we asked them to commit to this thing for the next two weeks. So we make this two week commitment. Um, another assignment we did were, were, were mistakes. Um, so we'd give them an exam that had a mistake in each question and they had to explain what the mistake was. So, you know, instead of testing them on, you know, the material itself, we're asking them now to correct other people. So that can also show understanding of the work, being able to make corrections. Um, we, we had them summarize sections. So they would have to go in advance, read the book, and then write a summary of the section, but just trying to teach them how to learn math as well. So that was the, the portfolio. So uh, with COVID, some of these things transformed. Uh, we, we created more writing assignments um, in each each week just to have students engage. Some of them were in the form of discussion boards uh, and some of them are, the, are, are similar activities that we had like the corrections and the, the tips for success. Um, we also added uh, at the end uh, sort of a, a note to students in, in the next course, you know, things that you wish you had done or what you would like to communicate. Uh, to the student in the next course. And it's funny, we did this for a couple semesters and I hadn't used them. And finally I compiled them and then I, you know, I put them all in. And it was such a powerful thing to read to students later on, um, you know, uh, what the, the past students had actually said. Um, and so that's part of their grading. We, we included mindset activities, also part of the portfolio. Um, my favorite one is the power of yet. Um, I, I, you get a lot of uh, negativity where people are like, oh, I can't do that. And I just say, yet, you know, you throw in the word yet to them. And it, it's, a, it's amazing how things can change. Um, we had added a reflective writing at the end of each section. Um, so summarize, you know, what are the topics we covered in the section? Um, what, are, what is something that you found easy to do? What are some things you found challenging? Um, and it just gets them to start uh, communicating, you know, the things that they know, as well as the things that they, they have trouble with. Uh, sometimes um, students won't say out loud what they have trouble with, but they will write this in this uh, personal reflection. Um, homework, online homework, the use of it and allowing uh, students to, you know, attempt as many times as they want. Um, before the due date, <laughs> you know, it's not, not forever, but before the due date. And then also um, recently just trying to modify our syllabus language. Um, we, we, we've made a push towards 
uh, making it, you know, accessible. That was a big thing first, but then also now the language uh, welcoming um, and letting students know that, you know, although we have all these assessments, um, these are all things that we believe will make you uh, successful in completing this course. Um, but again, this is my journey and it is still a journey I'm, <laughs> I am on, uh, always room for improvements. Very cool. I have a similar journey, and um, I wanted to just just talk about three things um, that I've done in my classes. So typically, um, I teach a humanities course, and <clears throat> I created an OER that focuses on global humanity. Um, I took out um, Plato. I took out uh, Socrates, I took out Beethoven, <laughs> and um, and it's it's focused on um, more of a global perspective of what we do and what makes us human. Um, and in our uh, hu humanity, humanness. And the other thing I did in our reading course is I shortened the time. Um, so we now have a developmental education reading course that is called Critical Literacy. And in this Critical Literacy course, I focused on why are you here? What are you learning? Why are you learning this? What's expected of you and why? And students integrate those ideas with the other courses that they take. So I'm not just simply teaching vocabulary and phonics, but I'm teaching um, how they can critically think about um, their, their activities and what they're learning in their courses. And the third thing that I did in um, the composition class um, is to take a, ver a, a bunch of articles from a variety of uh, perspectives and require students to do summary reflections. And then they met with me to develop their own topic, something that they were passionate about, something that they cared about. Um, and then they wrote a paper and they invited peer review. So they asked another student to review their paper, but they asked, what do, you, what do they want somebody to look at? And um, so they had to write questions. So then the, as they rewrote it, then they met with me. I said, just changes and revisions. And they wrote it with me. And then they met with me again and we graded it together. Um, and this was this was not too bad because we did this all by Zoom. Um, I think I would continue to do it in a face-to-face -face as well. Students meet with me in my office and we graded it together. Then once they finished, then they wrote up a self-evaluation of the entire process. What did they think they could do better? Um, what could they, um, what grade would they give themselves? Um, and so it was a really, a really interesting, really interactive process here. Um, so those are a few of the ways where I incorporated um, anti-racism um, learning, and I also incorporated critical critical thinking and um, not just focusing on um, what 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 do we call them old dead white guys in the content. So we wanted to offer a variety of resources. Now I know this is a little difficult to look at and you can't, you can't go um, to the site, but we will share a Google document with you that Liz has put together um, with these on it. And there are um, toolkits on assessment. There's how to decolonize your syllabus. There's an equity rubric. Um, we've made sure to include the land acknowledgement um, website that you can um, take a look at. So there's a, a variety of resources here. Now, what we'd like um, you to do in a breakout room is to think about these possibilities. Um, Liz has posted the, uh, the Google slide in um, the chat there, so you can take a look at it in a minute. Um, so there are a variety of things, there's small things, and we thought everybody could come up with just one small thing that you could do, um, and you could talk about how you might think about doing this. Of course, there's um, ideas on a self-reflective type journey, where students can um, 
you know, watch a video, read a book. There's curriculum change ideas. Um, there's also a syllabus change ideas. We do have a link to a liquid syllabus, which I think both, both of us intend to do in the future, <laughs> hopefully sooner than later. Um, and then there's also pedagogical changes that we can make, just implementing a small pedagogical change in um, what we do. And assessment um, is such a, a teacher-centric idea. So we talked about um, what are some things that you could do to um, incorporate some different ideas. And so we'll uh, have a Mentimeter uh, once you finish talking in your uh, small groups with a takeaway. And that takeaway would be, what will you do? So I'm gonna stop sharing now and see if there's any questions and Liz will um, put us into groups. We decided that groups of five might be the best way to go. And if you click on the link that Liz has put in the chat, you'll find access to the resources and the question um, that you would want to be discussing in your group with hopefully one takeaway that you might incorporate in your classes. Welcome back as you come back. As you can see, I'm sharing the Mentimeter. If you had a chance to put something on there. I noticed that a lot of people have been typing them in the chat as well. Yeah, I really like the idea of student stories. One thing I uh, didn't didn't mention is we started a a blog, and students would add to a blog their own stories. Um, that was really fun, and then they could share it with each other if they wanted to. So they they didn't have to, but they could share it with each other. Reflective writing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of students building, students helping to build rubrics. Discussion topics to engage with. Mm -hmm. Student creating. I really found the idea of student creating valuable when they created their own work. <laughs> Did anybody like to share with voice beyond Mentimeter? I'm trying to monitor the chat here. Yes, we go. Anything you want to add to something? Um, Lori Beth, um, are we supposed to be seeing the Mentimeter right now, or do we have? Are you to... not seeing the Mentimeter? 
I, I'm not, but <laughs> I might be clueless. Is everybody else seeing it? Oh, they are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let never me just mind. share one more time just to make sure. Here we go. I must have. Uh... Oh, now I'm seeing it. Thank you. Now I'm seeing it. Okay. <laughs> oh, pop. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so there's a couple of questions um, about the liquid syllabus. So from my understanding, and I haven't created one yet, um, you haven't either, Asantabu, right? We we have at least one expert in the room. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I, I have not completely com created one. I started creating one and I was sharing earlier that I just Googled it, <laughs> you know, how to how to create a liquid syllabus. And there were a couple of different videos um, and it was just creating a Google site and I've been building it. It's, it's very, very, at, at the very beginning stages. Very cool. Who's our, who's our resident expert? You said we had one, right, Luna? Well, I happen to be in the room with uh, Menica Olson, and she's created, I think, two now, right? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought I didn't know you were um, calling on me. Uh, I guess I, I mean, I redo them a little bit every semester. So I, I have uh, three, I have three basic, three or four basic ones. Yeah. For us, one, one for a summer course that I, I, you know, I kind of organize it a little differently. Yeah, no, it's really great. And I, and actually one of the things that I didn't realize uh, was a benefit is I get the feedback because I see that students have actually clicked on it, right? You, when you have a website, right, which is what a liquid syllabus in essence is, it's your own website, is um, you can see the, um, the viewing details, right? Um, I do get worried about my old liquid syllabuses being out there because I make them specific for the semester. So I always like, I pull them off. <laughs> the the but it is it is like uh creating a website and I have experience doing that um I used um being communications director at a number of um agencies so in I think that that skill lent itself to creating a liquid syllabus but yeah Oh, um, I, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't, I don't mind sharing liquid syllabus. I don't use Google sites and actually I've been curious about Google sites. Um, but yeah, uh, hang on a second. Uh, Sybil shared one. It's like Sybil shared one. I wish I could have joined every breakout room <clears throat> to hear everybody's good examples. Well, let's, let's head back to ah, there's another. Thank you. Thank you for those examples. Of liquid syllabus. So I believe this uh, Mentimeter will stay up, but you will always have um, access to the Google Doc. Let's head back here. <clears throat> Does anybody have any? questions or other comments before we continue on? Do you have any questions? Anything you want to add, Santa? No, no. Um, it was interesting going through the rooms and hearing um, that people are doing some of the same things uh, in, in their own work. Mm -hmm. Any other questions?
Never wait long enough. So as we continue, we did want to mention that on December 7th, there's another CCC OER webinar. The link to register is there. And we'll be talking about measuring the impact of open education. If you'd like to stay in the loop, you can see our upcoming webinars under the website at Get Involved. The community email is um, link is there as well. And we also have a fairly new EDI website with blog posts and student impact stories. If you wouldn't mind, because, especially because this is sort of a new format um, with a workshop type style, um, if you wouldn't mind to take the short survey, Liz has put that in the chat as well, and give us some feedback would be wonderful. And from all of us at CCC OER, here's contact information. And we'll be available for a few minutes um, after the recording stops to ask, ask, answer any questions or further chat. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. The link to, let's see, Sophia, you wanted the link to the the, the webinar that you share for registration sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Sometimes when I go back to the site, I forget. So right now I can just go ahead and register. So thank you. Okay, sure. Thanks, Sophia. Did you get that? Let's see. Liz is super fast. Thanks, Wade. Thank you. Let's see, Melanie, did you have a question or are you clapping? It's hard for me to tell. <laughs> I think clapping. 